What's going on, everybody? It's Monday. Time for Swift News. I didn't do laundry this weekend. Uh, as always, links for the show will be in the GitHub repo that you see here. The link to that repo will be in the description. And then throughout the week, use hashtag Swift News. I check that before I put the show together. If you have an article that you think would be a good fit. All right, let's throw up the rundown and get into the show. First up, I have an article from Danilo Campos that got me excited. And really it was one paragraph that did it, not necessarily like the whole point of the article. Uh, let me share that with you. So the title of the article is Why Swift Isn't Being Undermined uh, of Its Potential. And the context here is somebody on Reddit basically asked the question, you know, why isn't Apple donating resources to turn Swift into a dominant language that does everything? And essentially the point of the article is, you know, Yes, Apple is happy if you know server-side Swift takes off, Swift for Windows takes off. But the, what he's saying in this article is that, you know, at the end of the day, Swift and Swift UI is like Apple's strategic, you know, plan for like the long term. And that's the uh, what the paragraph is about that I want to point out here. Right? Uh, it talks about building apps on like multiple multiple platforms. So Swift exists to make the process of building those apps more accessible, reliable, intuitive, and more cross-device scalable for teams of all sizes. Talking about like Swift and Swift UI, what you're starting to see here. It's not there yet, of course, but you're starting to see where it could be going. Uh, you know, building an entire language libraries uh, ecosystem is wildly expensive. Apple does it for strategic benefit, not as a hobby. Within those strategic goals, uh, Swift has been successful at meeting its immediate potential. As an early adopter of Swift UI, I think we've only seen the beginning, and this is the sentence that did it for me. I think we've only seen the beginning of how Swift is a foundation for their long-term goals. And this sentence kind of like made my mind go and got me really excited. Like, of course, the iPhone is not going to be Apple's final platform, right? Technology is always changing. It evolves. Who knows if it's AR glasses, VR, maybe even the car. I know we think like CarPlay isn't really a thing most developers work on. You probably don't think much of it, but just take a look at like Tesla's new like in-car in dash and like what are cars going to be in 10, 20 years if self-driving does take off and now the car, you know, dash is like a thing developers actually want to develop for. So again, this is all like hypothetical, but it got my mind wandering and got me excited and I wanted to share it. Next up, Paul Hudson released some updates to a couple products. He has Control Room. Control Room 2.0 is out now. Uh, basically, you know, gives you a lot more control over the simulator. He's got a video uh, of it here showing you what it does. If you want to check that out, of course, link will be in the description. And then as always, you can check out uh, the GitHub to actually see the code, download it, use it, uh, whatever. But definitely a nice tool uh, that we use the simulator from Paul here. And then similarly, kind of, uh, another open source tool from Paul called SitRep. Uh, it's just a tool to scan through your Swift projects and print out statistics, right? Such as you can see here the number of structs classes you have total lines of code source lines of code what's your longest file just interesting stats about your project moving on i wanted to share an article from chris and i do want to show the heading here right opinion big disclaimer here if you don't agree with some of this stuff like it's just opinion we're not trying to start wars here uh, but anyway software development topics i've changed my mind on after six years in the industry and and this is similar to the video i made recently about how your developer thoughts and opinions will change over time like especially if you're a junior like you're just starting or you know a couple years of experience your opinions are going to change drastically of course as you go throughout your career, of course, they can still change, but I believe they change probably less and less. Um, you know, you're more malleable as a junior developer right now. Um, definitely read this, check them all out, but uh, some ones I always point out, right? Clever code isn't usually good code, right? Clarity trumps all of the concerns. And by the way, I think, I don't think I said this, right? These are things I now believe which past me would have squabbled with. Again, back how like your, your opinion changes over time. Uh, here's the one so-called best practices are contextual and not broadly applicable. I say this all the time too, like just blindly following something because someone on the internet said it was best practice. I mean, I'm not going to go as far as say make you an idiot. That might be a bit harsh, but the, the key here is like, don't just blindly following something, right? Everything is contextual, right? That's why the answer in programming is like always like it depends because one solution that's perfect for someone else may not be the perfect solution for you and your product. So Again, definitely take advice from like all these best practices, but you know, look at it objectively and make sure it is the best thing for you to do. Don't just blindly follow it. Like that's the key here. But anyway, just again, just interesting stuff, uh, opinions he's picked up uh, along the way. 
I like this one. Uh, pencil and paper are the best programming tools and vastly underused. I agree with that. I'm constantly like jotting down on pen and paper, like my ideas, drawing stuff. Uh, even when I'm trying to like build a feature, I'll kind of like pseudo code it out like on paper just to get the idea down uh, a lot of times. So anyway, uh, some good stuff here. Interesting. Again, these are opinions. If you don't agree with them, I'm not saying everything you said is right. Don't start a war in the comments, but just interesting to see how like, you know, your thought process evolves. Next up, we have an article about Swift UI Mac menus, and this is a little uh, little personal to me. Uh, in my project creator view that I'm working on, it's also a Mac app, and a big roadblock that I'm running into is uh, just working with the Mac. I've never built a Mac app. I don't really know like the best way to do things, so I'm like starting from scratch, Googling everything. Uh, so this is a little insight. You may see some more Mac-related content uh, on the channel as I get experience with that, learn that, because there's also like, Compared to iOS content, Mac OS content, uh, night and day. Like there's, compared to iOS content, there's hardly any Mac OS content. So maybe I'll help change that a little bit in time, but I wanted to share this for those that are working on a Mac as well uh, in Swift UI, um, you know, building a newer universal app. Uh, this is a whole article on how to use basically menus, correct? Right? Cause there's various different like menus you can use in the Mac as you can see here. So if you're building a Mac app, you're struggling with menus like I am, uh, I think this is a great article. Next up, I have Antoine Vanderlee. Uh, I just featured him, I think last week about his computed properties article. So this is kind of like a sequel to this. This is like part two of that, a continuation because he's back with Lazy Var and Swift Explained. And Lazy Var and computed properties are pretty similar, but you should really know when, you know, the pros and cons of each and when to use one and when to use the other. And this article does exactly that. Like, you know, as you see, what is a lazy var? You can get the explanation. And then the big one here, the difference between computed uh, and lazy stored property. And this is a performance reason. Um, you know, there's a reason where you should use one and the other. And this article really breaks that down for you. So if you wanna brush up on your basics here or you're just learning and you're not sure, uh, check out this article uh, from Antoine about lazy var in Swift. And then if you missed last week's episode, so he talked about computer properties, which he links to uh, right here as well. So definitely check that out too. Moving on, iOS Con SG just went on, uh, I think last week, and all the videos are up on YouTube. Of course, nowadays we do virtual conferences, so it's kind of like you were there uh, by watching the YouTube videos. So again, Hitchhiker's Guide to Swift UI by Malin here, uh, Cocoa Pods to Swift Package Manager, how to convert those. You can scroll through the topics and check it out, watch the videos you find interesting. Um, but again, now that they're all virtual, watching the YouTube is kind of like going to the conference. Uh, you may not get that live Q&A interaction, but um, yeah, wanted to share all the videos that are up now. And then finally, the LOLs of the week. Uh, this one hit This one hit real close to home. Uh, once COVID is over, in quotes, uh, it's starting to sound a lot like, once I've launched this side project, that one hurt, that hurts. Uh, and then finally, we have every Fang tech job, uh, the technical interview, Kong versus Godzilla, really powerful. And then uh, the actual job not quite what the interview may have uh, portrayed. I thought that was pretty funny. Anyway, that wraps it up for this week's episode of Swift News. We'll see you in the next one.